Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over 5 worked examples to show you how to do problems involving wave particle duality. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my theory videos on wave particle duality and de Broglie wavelength, as that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in those videos to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says, wave particle duality says that electromagnetic radiation can act both like a wave and like a particle without contradiction. Part A says to describe one piece of evidence for waves behaving like particles. Well, one piece of evidence would be the photoelectric effect, which is particles of light, i.e. photons, causing electrons to be ejected from a metal surface. You could also have mentioned Compton scattering here. Part B says describe one piece of evidence for particles behaving like waves. Well, a key piece of evidence from the notes was electron diffraction, which is an electron beam bombarding thin films of metal producing diffraction rings, i.e. concentric circles. Question 2 says to calculate the de Broglie wavelength of an electron travelling at 4.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find lambda. We know that H Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And lastly, the speed V is 4.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So writing down our equation for de Broglie wavelength, we have lambda equals h over p, which I'm going to expand to h over mv because linear momentum p is equal to mv. Substituting in the numbers, we have 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 4.0 times 10 to the 6. And putting that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And note that this is a typical X-ray wavelength. Part B says to calculate the de Broglie wavelength of a car of mass 1000 kg travelling at 120 km per hour. Now notice first of all that this is a classical physics example, not quantum physics. So let's see what happens with this one. So we're trying to find lambda like before. We know that h is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. We know that the mass m is 1000 kg and v is 120 km per hour. But remember we need to convert speeds into meters per second, so timesing this by 1000 will get it into meters per hour, and then we need to divide by 60 twice to get it into meters per second. So that gives me 120,000 divided by 60 times 60, which if you put into your calculator gives roughly 33.3 .3 meters per second. And we can then write down our equation for de Broglie wavelength, lambda equals h over p equals h over mv, Substituting in the numbers gives 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 1000 times 33.3. .3. Now if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 38 meters. However, notice that this is not observable as the wavelength is smaller than the smallest known quantity, which is Planck's constant, because we've got this power of minus 38. So this suggests that this is not possible and this is not observable. So therefore, the de Broglie wavelength equation lambda equals h over p does not work for classical physics examples like a car of mass 1000 kilograms. However, it will work for subatomic particles. So we can conclude then that de Broglie wavelength only works for quantum physics. Question 3 says an electron microscope uses electrons of wavelength 0.04 nanometers. Determine the required speed of the electrons. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the speed v. We know that lambda equals 0.04 nanometers, which I'm going to change into meters. So remember, nano is 0.04 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Planck's constant h is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And lastly, mass is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms for the electron, which is on your data sheet. Writing down the equation for de Broglie wavelength, we have lambda equals h over p equals h over mv. Substituting in the numbers gives us 0.04 times 10 to the minus 9 equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times v. And then what I'm going to do is cross and multiply, which is the same as just swapping the v term with this term here. So I'm going to end up with v is equal to this on the top divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times this term. And if I put that into the calculator, I should get an answer of v equals 1.8 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Question 4 says an electron and a proton both move with the same velocity of 3.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Which has the larger de Broglie wavelength and by how many times larger to two significant figures? Well, let's think about both separately first of all. So looking at the electron first, we can say that wavelength is what we're trying to find. Planck's constant h is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. The mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms from the data sheet. And the speed v is 3.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So writing down our equation, we have lambda equals h over p equals h over mv. Substituting in the numbers 
gives 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 3.0 times 10 to the 6 and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 2.4 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Doing the same but for the proton this time, the only thing that's going to change is actually the mass. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find lambda. So H is the same as before. Mass this time though from the data sheet for mass of a proton is 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms and the speed V is the same as before. So writing down our equation, we have lambda equals H over P equals H over MV, which if we put in the numbers gives 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 over 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 times 3.0 times 10 to the 6. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.3 times 10 to the minus 13 meters. And now what we need to do is compare them looking at orders of magnitude. So if we take the de Broglie wavelength of the electron and divide it by the de Broglie wavelength for the proton, that gives us 2.4 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 1.3 times 10 to the minus 13, which is equal to 1,846, which is approximately equal to 1,800 because remember we were asked to state this to two significant figures. So therefore we can conclude that the electron has the larger de Broglie wavelength, i.e. it is 1,800 times larger or three orders of magnitude greater. Lastly, question 5 says an electron orbits the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. Part A says to calculate the angular momentum of this electron in the first stable orbit. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the angular momentum L. We know that N equals 1 because it's the first orbit and Planck's constant H is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds from the data sheet. And writing down our equation, we have L equals NH over 2 pi, which remember is the equation for quantization of angular momentum for the Bohr model of the atom. Substituting in our numbers, we have 1 times 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 2 pi, which gives an answer of 1.06 times 10 to the minus 34 kilogram meter squared per second. Part 2 says to calculate the angular momentum of the electron in the third stable orbit. So this time the only thing that's going to change is the principal quantum number n, so n is going to be 3 rather than 1. So we have l is what we're trying to find, n equals 3 this time, and h equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And so writing down our equation, we have l equals nh over 2 pi. Substituting in the 3 this time, we get an answer of 3.17 times 10 to the minus 34 kilogram meter squared per second once you put it into your calculator. Part B says, starting with the relationship MVR equals NH over 2 pi, show that the circumference of the third stable orbit is equal to three electron wavelengths. Well, remember the circumference is given by 2 pi times the radius, 2 pi r. We'll want to rearrange this equation MVR equals NH over 2 pi to get 2 pi r. So if we do that, we can cross multiply over so we can get 2 pi up here and leave the r where it is, and then we'll take the MV down. So we'll get 2 pi r equals nh over mv. And since we have an equation for de Broglie wavelength, lambda equals h over p, which is equal to h over mv, then we can replace the h over mv in here with lambda. So we can write that 2 pi r is equal to n lambda. And remember we were given that it was the third stable orbit. So in the third stable orbit, n equals 3. So we can therefore write that 2 pi r is equal to 3 lambda. In other words, the circumference is equal to 3 electron wavelengths. Part C then says the speed of an electron in the second stable orbit is 1.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Part 1 says to calculate the de Broglie wavelength of the electron. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find lambda. We know that h equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. The mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And lastly, the speed v is 1.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So writing down our equation for de Broglie wavelength, we have lambda equals h over p equals h over mv. Substituting in the numbers gives 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 1.5 times 10 to the 6. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And lastly, part 2 says to calculate the circumference of the second stable orbit. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the circumference, which is 2 pi r. We know that n equals 2 because it's the second stable orbit. The de Broglie wavelength we just worked out to be 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, and we can therefore write down our equation for the quantization of angular momentum, mvr equals nh over 2 pi. So rearranging for 2 pi r, we get 2 pi r equals nh over mv, which we said earlier was equal to an integer multiple of de Broglie wavelengths. So we have 2 pi r equals n lambda. So substituting in our numbers, we have 2 times 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 9.8 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. So we've shown that the circumference is equal to that value.
That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.